Hello, welcome to Yoga One. Today we'll be doing a practice on alignment. My name is Dr. Erica Putnam. I teach yoga here at The Wave and I normally teach Thursday at 11.30. So today I want you to start in an easy seat and let yourself kind of wiggle around a little bit, get comfortable, sit up on the sitting bones. And I usually start my practices with the idea of moving into your yoga place. So kind of leaving behind the day and just moving into the body, moving onto your mat, becoming present. And so let's sit up nice and tall, close the eyes, just rest the hands someplace that's comfortable for you. And let yourself begin to focus on your own breath. And as you breathe, let your body begin to relax, let the mind begin to have some space. And I like to do a breath sometimes when I do an alignment practice that moves energy from the pelvic bowl all the way through the top of the head. So as you inhale, you just want to imagine the breath starting in the pelvic bowl, lifting up, drawing the belly button in, directing the energy kind of through the heart center, the throat center, up through the mind, through the brain, out the top of the head, and then exhale. And then as you inhale, same kind of pull the pelvic floor up, draw the pelvic floor and abdomen in, continue the breath up, all the way up, and then exhale. So let yourself find this cycle of breath You may notice the pace change. But we'll do about 10 rounds of this type of breathing. Just using this breath to center. Do two more rounds with the same style of breath. Inhale, inhaling from the pelvis, drawing the energy and air up. Exhale. And sit up nice and tall. Slowly tip your head over to the left. Creating space in the shoulder. And inhale, take your head to center. Inhale here, grow the spine a little taller. Exhale. Take the head over to the right. Then inhale, take your head center. From here, just slowly turn your head, look over the left shoulder. So even though we're doing an alignment-based practice, I sort of think as alignment as similar to opening. They're not the same. Come back to center. Turning your head the other way, looking over the other shoulder. But more or less, we're creating space. Space in the joints, space in the muscles, space in the mind. And that allows a different kind of alignment. So not necessarily come back to center perfect alignment. I think that alignment sometimes means a rigid, straight line. And I think often with the alignment that we're looking for is that we're looking for our best alignment, which is not the same. I've looked at a lot of x-rays, and I think a lot of times really strict yoga practice. It's hard for everyone to get there, so just practice for yourself. Take your left hand, put it out. Reach your right hand up and over. Keep the hand soft. And then maybe just open through the chest a little bit here, warming up through 
the spine, and then switching sides. Taking a few, the first few breaths, kind of moving into a pose, opening through the chest. Let's do this with a little breath. Inhale here, exhale, take this over to the other side. And then inhale here, exhale, take it over to the right. One more time. Reaching over, just creating space. And last time. All right, and then let's come back to center. So just a couple pelvic rocks here just to show you. I'm going to grab my ankle, sit up nice and tall, and then just gently release back, kind of round. It's a little bit of a cat-cow in a sitting position coming up, lifting the chest, using those legs for resistance, and then leaning back. So at your own pace, if you want to hold this, if it feels really good, stay there. Exhale when you lift. Inhale. Do that one more time. All right, and then just sit up nice and tall on those sitting bones. Reach the hands back behind you, interlace the fingers, lift the chest, stretch the hands away. Be a little mindful of the wrists here. Maybe take the palms together. All right, go ahead and release. Take your knees together. Go ahead and move into child pose on your mat. So take the big toes together, take the knees wide. Sink the hips back nice and long. So find some space here, opening through the hips, reaching the arms out. Maybe connecting with your intention here. What are you looking for in your practice? And then if you like to, set your elbows down, take your hands together and then take your hands behind your head. Go ahead and release that down and then make any little shifts that you can to make this a little bit more stretchy. One more time, creating more space in the spine, more space underneath of the arms. All right, then inhale here. Exhale, bring yourself up. Let's come on to all fours. So on all fours, put the hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. And first find a strong spine, nice long spine. Crown of the head is forward. And just connect with the energy from the tailbone to the crown of the head. Think about making space between the vertebra. And then I want you to just kind of rock back and forth a little bit. Maybe rock side to side, feeling into any tight spaces in the body. So just a little bit of an inquiry here. All right. Then from here, I want you to take your left leg, put it out to the side, and set your foot flat. And then just reach the hips back a little bit until you find a little resistance in the inner thigh, stretching through. The knee's gonna be a little bit soft. If you wanna move your head side to side and do a little accessory stretch, that's fine. Breathe. All right, bring yourself forward. Bring that left leg in. And then take the right leg out to the side. Set your foot down. And before you move, just notice how you feel and then gently move into that stretch. Sending the hips back. Staying connected with the breath, staying connected with your intention of treating your body in a way that feels respectful, feels in alignment with your intention. Okay, one more breath here. All right, and then draw that leg in. From here, you're gonna just sweep around and come on to your back. When you come onto your back, I want you to hug your knees in, grab behind the shins, a little bit of rock, side to side. And then move into happy baby pose. So take the feet to the ceiling, use the hands to 
gently pull down, maybe use the elbows to move the knees apart. And you can hold inner arch, outer arch, whatever feels most comfortable for you. Breath or two here. Good. Then from here, draw your right knee into your chest and up towards the armpit. Take your left arm, left leg, excuse me, out straight. Press the heel away and draw that knee towards the shoulder. Maybe even using your hand, kind of stretching through the front of that left quadricep. And we're going to find a little bit of opening here. So I'm going to have you take that right knee out to the side a little bit. You can anchor with your left hand and just gently stretch the inner thigh. And then you're going to switch sides so that leg is going to come across. And you can use your hand and then anchor that right arm out. If you want a little neck stretch, turn the head. And then come back to center. Draw that left knee in. Switching sides, extend the right leg out. Just taking your time, feeling your way. Draw that left knee towards the shoulder. And then from here, opening that left knee out, anchoring through the right arm, potentially turning the head away. Just feel what feels good. I always like to press my shoulder blades into the mat, just adds a little extra stretch for my spine, my shoulder. Go ahead and take that leg across from you. And then if you like, open the arm out to the side. Come back to center, drop both knees into the chest. Let's go ahead and drop the feet to the mat so your knees are gonna be bent. We're just gonna do a couple of lifts here, little bridges to start warming up the spine. I want you to imagine you have a block between your knees, draw the knees together, lift the pelvic floor, draw the belly button towards the spine, then press the heels, then lift. So I like the idea with yoga to prepare before you actually move. Breath or two here, slowly lower down. Inhale at the bottom, prepare, knees together, lift the pelvic floor, draw the belly button in, lift. So this is more about the intensity of the contraction, less about the number that we do. Inhale at the bottom, exhale, lift. Inhale, exhale, lift. So let's move through a few more of these. Find your own breath pace here. Maybe it feels good to hold it up and you wanna stay there. Maybe you're feeling a little energetic and enjoying the breathing and movement. This is always your class, your pace. Let's do two more. These are really good exercises for the lower spine muscles, the multipedous muscles. They stabilize a lot of our poses, protect the low back from disc injuries. Last one. Okay, slowly release down. And then from here, just kind of windshield wiper the knees out a little bit, releasing the spine. And then go ahead and rock yourself up. We're gonna come into hero's pose. So you're gonna come to hero's pose, you may need a block you need to sit on a pillow. But you're going to come down, kind of up on the sitting bone so you keep that natural curve in the lumbar spine. You're going to find we're going to do this move a lot today. So what I want you to do is kind of put your elbows together as best you can. And then take your hands over your head like we did sort of when we were in child's pose. And when you, when you do that, try not to hyperextend in the lower back, but try and lift the heart so you get a little bit of a stretch, a little bit of a back bend in the upper back. And then take the hands up again, center again, breathe, inhale. And you anchor this through the belly, 
Just lifting a little bit. Good. All right. I want you to go ahead and come to the back of your mat. Come into a forward fold somewhere at the back of your mat. Your feet are going to be about hip distance apart. Bend the knees a lot so you can take the sitting bones back. That again activates those multifidus muscles protecting the back. And then let the head go. The knees are bending a lot so you can take your hands behind the shins here. Kind of grasp. And then as you're ready, you might want to stand a little bit. Again, sitting bones are reaching back. This isn't a rounded back posture. Take a breath or two. Good, let's release that. Crawl yourself out to plank pose. All the way out to plank pose. Good. Just to build, build a little bit of heat here. Then I want you to inhale here. Exhale, come back to down dog. I'm going to do a vanity tuck of my shirt. <laughs> so you're in down dog. Bend the knees. Again, sitting bones are reaching back. We're protecting the back here. And then decide how you feel. You might want to pedal these feet. This is our first down dog. You might kind of rock back and forth. Or sometimes I go hand to hand, foot to foot. Take a breath here. And then let's inhale and then exhale. Come forward to plank. So build some heat. Inhale here, exhale. Take down dog. Inhale here, exhale, plank. One more time, down dog. Last time, inhale here, come forward. And then exhale, down dog. All right, bend your knees a lot. Look forward, come to the front of your mat. Find a half lift here. So take the hands to the shins, lengthen. And then take your hands back behind you. Turn your thumbs to the ceiling. Feel those shoulders externally rotate back. So your hands should be like they're facing the ground. And then hands come down, forward fold. And then inhale, and as you exhale, reach up for the sky. And then take hands to heart. So let's do a few little half salutes here, just still building heat. So inhale up, exhale forward. Half lift, lengthen, fold. Reach up, and your arms can go through the middle or out wide, whichever feels best to you. A lot of times with shoulder problems, the wider those arms go, the more pain there is. So do what feels good. Inhale up, exhale forward. Let the head go. Take a half lift, fold. One more time, inhale, reach up, and then take hands to heart. All right, inhale, reach up, exhale, fold. Take a half lift, lengthen. Good. Take your hands down, step your right foot back, and find a low lunge. So you're in two tracks, and then just come up on to the side. Take a breath here, starting to find some release in the front of that leg. All right, from here, take your hands up. Again, you're gonna kind of put them together like prayer and drop them behind your head so that you find a lift here. And then let them come up, touch, and then bend. One more time, reaching up. And then bending. And then go ahead and reach up. Now from here, you're gonna take crescent pose. So you could just lift you don't have the strength to lift, there's no problem with kind of scooching that leg in. So do what you've got the strength for, and the hands are gonna still be up. Touch those hands together, draw the core in. So just in a little bit of a crescent pose here. Good, and then just testing that, bending the arms, reaching overhead. Good, shift that back foot into a warrior one foot. So just change that little bit of a stretch and then really work on reaching those arms up. My shoulders have been frozen for a while, but it's really getting better. So I have to really work at stretching, or excuse me, straightening the elbow, pushing the hands together. All right, take the hands behind you, interlace the fingers, 
press down. Contain the core. So traditional yoga has you really um, square in the hips. I don't necessarily agree with that in some ways from the chiropractic standpoint of alignment. I think take this to what feels good. And I like to move my chest. So I square my chest to the front of the room, still finding active legs, still working through the core, maybe not straining the hip so much. Inhale here as you exhale, find humble warrior. If you can, let the head go, decide. The hands can be on the lower back or you can reach them over, whatever your practice is calling for today. All right, you're gonna put your hands down, come back onto that ball of the foot. You're gonna be in a high lunge. And then let's just take a little open twist. Keep the right hand down, reach the left hand up. Really activate that back leg. Breathe. All right, lower the hand, inhale here, exhale. Step that right foot to meet the left. Take a half lift. Let's do the other side. So hands down, left foot back, come down onto left knee. Then just come on up. You're gonna let yourself find some stretch in the front of that left thigh. Not dumping into the hip, a little bit of pulling the inner thighs together, drawing that in. All right, reach the arms up, interlace the fingers or put the palms together in prayer. Drop them behind your head. Now see, I can feel my head coming forward. Sometimes we push the head forward, so draw the head back, lift the elbows up. Straighten the arms, maybe organize, find a little bit more space, and then, again, elbows are lifting up. Then reach up. Decide how you're gonna get there. So you're aware of your transition. Can you come just straight into a crescent or use your hands? It doesn't matter as long as you feel stable, you feel comfortable. Once you arrive, hands come up. Kind of work with that pelvic bowl. Maybe you're hyperextending, so tilt it under, or maybe it's too far under. A lot of stretch in that hip. Square those ribs. Drop the hands down. So we're just making space in the side body. Breathe, reach up one more time, bend them down. Good. And then go ahead and move that back foot to a warrior one foot. And then let's work on this reach up. So you're really reaching up, containing the core. Maybe your hands need to come forward, you decide. Square those ribs. And then take the hands behind you, interlace the fingers. Find a nice stretch to the chest, squaring to the front of the room, keeping the navel in. Mindful of the wrists, breathe. And then inhale here, exhale, come forward. Let your head go into humble warrior. And then hands can come up if you like, or down, whichever you prefer. A couple of breaths. All right, let the hands come down. Come into a high lunge with that left foot. Then you're gonna take a twist. So keep the left hand down. You may have a block at home. The hand can come either to the hip or reach all the way up. So keep pressing the left heel back. Looking up, you're building some neck strength here. Feel the line between the left heel, and the crown of the head. All right, release. Inhale here. Mindfully step your left foot to meet the right. Maybe you have to take a couple of bounces. That's okay. Half lift, fold. Reach for the sky, inhale up. And then exhale, hands to heart. Just take a moment to breathe, check in with how you're feeling. Good. So let's inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Half lift, lengthen. Hands down, find yourself in down dog. I don't have a lot of chaturangas planned for you today. So hold this down dog. Wiggle if you like, or find stillness. Release the tension in the neck. All right, so take your right leg towards the sky. Bend your knee in. You're gonna step 
your right foot forward, you're gonna move to warrior two. Just be mindful that you're, like you're stepping over something, use your strength. If it doesn't come all the way up, you can set it down. Move it with your hand, no problem. Turn the back foot parallel, and then find yourself coming up to warrior two. So with alignment here, we're looking at opening the inner thighs, lifting the chest, kind of taking the shoulders back, maybe even turn the palms over, keep the shoulders where they are, turn the hands back down. Good, and then maybe lower this a little bit more, still keeping your focus and keeping the mind focused, keeping the alignment with your intention. Good, straighten the front leg and take this to triangle pose. So you're gonna reach forward, take the hand down, the knees are gonna be a little bit soft and you can go down as far as you like. And I'm gonna have you take this back hand and put it behind you. So it's almost as if the motion is kind of a shrugging back. So you're opening through the chest, you're opening through the pelvis. Knee is soft, you're really using the core here, breathing. If you like gaining a little bit of neck strength, challenging the balance, looking at the sky. Still focusing on that shoulder. All right, let's all look down. We're gonna transition to half moon. I want you to keep your hand behind you if you can. If your balance isn't that good, just set it on your hip, but know that's where we're going. So you're gonna bend the knees, maybe bring that back leg in a little bit, hand in front of you, potentially on a block, right underneath the shoulder, press the heel away, open the hips, and then with your practice, you could bend the knee and grab the foot. You can reach the arm up if you like. Hold and breathe, keep the focus. Now transitioning out of here, we're gonna to go to warrior three. How you're gonna do that is you're gonna bend the knee a lot, kinda of take the leg behind you, square your hips to the mat, and then start to extend it back. So for some of you, it's gonna to maybe touch the mat. The rest of you might be able to take it out. And then you can decide, how you like your hands. You can reach them out in front of you, but use the glutes, square them to the mat, keep the alignment there. You might even wanna kind of do something more like airplane, take them behind you. I really like the feeling of them at my heart space. It's a longer lever and certainly harder building more spinal strength if the arms are out. One more breath, good job. Take the left foot, set it behind the right, bend the knees and come forward to stretch the outside of that right thigh that you just worked. Lower the head, breath or two, hands down, step back, down dog again. Good. So again, make this your own down dog. You can wiggle around front to back, bend the knees and pedal, but regroup, come back to your intention. Let's do the other side. Left leg comes up, bring it on through, set it between the hands, however you can get there, turn that back foot parallel. I always kind of like to surf my warriors up if you've taken my class. But the first part of this um, yoga pose, any yoga pose, is just get oriented. Notice the body sensation, notice the breath. Think about opening the hips, making sure You've got all four corners of the feet on the ground. Lift the chest, offer your heart, breathe. All right, from here, straighten the front leg. Taking triangle pose, you're gonna reach forward with the left hand. Take it down wherever it goes. Try not to lean forward, but inviting the alignment through the pelvis. Once you're stable in the lower body, then do something for expressing this pose. So roll the shoulder back, hand is gonna come behind the back. and just feel into what feels good to you here. You can always come up. If you're having a challenge, maybe you wanna come down and really find another expression. One more breath. So again, mindful of where we're going. We're going to half moon pose. So bend that front knee, set your intention a foot or so ahead of you, coming on up. Left hand is gonna come down, maybe on a block, maybe to the floor. But when you get here, press the heel away, open the hips. So you start engaging 
the core of the side body. Find your balance, keep your focus. Three breaths. When you're done, you bend that left knee a lot. Bring your right knee in. Square the hips before you move on. Then start to send the leg back. Maybe it's just the toe and the arms here. If you've got the strength, you're building a stronger yoga process. practice. Keep squaring the hips. We tend to open the hips here because the glutes are stronger there. Play with the arms. Find the expression that most matches your intention. Breathe. So you're not fighting anything in the pose, but enjoy it. Two more breaths. Okay, bend that left leg. Bend the right leg. Set the right leg behind the left, solidly here, and then take this into a little bit of a forward fold. So you should feel the stretch in the outside of that uh, left hip, sometimes the right hip. I like to shift back and forth. All right, you're gonna go right into down dog from here. So inhale here, exhale, come forward to plank. Moving through your version of vinyasa, I'll walk you through the beginner's version. Forward on the toes, lowering the knees. Bending the elbow, go halfway down. Feel the core engage. Then lower the pelvis, the ribs, the chest, super safe for the shoulders. Flip the toes, hands back. Turn those thumbs up. Now granted, you could be an up dog if you like. Just sneaking in a little bit of back strength here. Maybe you want to lift the feet, lower down, lower the hands, and then inhale here, exhale, lift from the front body up, 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 till the hips kind of pop up, and you're back in down dog. Take a breath. All right, bend both knees, look forward. Let's come to the front of the mat. Half lift here, and fold. Inhale, reach for the sky all the way up. This time, take your right hand to the back of the room, left hand forward, and look at the thumb. So you're getting some work here in the neck, actually, in the occiput, which is really good for creating good hormones in the mind. Inhale up. Exhale, left hand back, right hand forward. And as you're there, pull the shoulder blade to spine. Still contain the core. Inhale here. Exhale, reach those hands all the way up. Now sink yourself in to chair pose. So as you come into your chair pose, alignment-wise, try not to get too far forward. Sink the hips back. Look down, see if you can either not see the toes or barely see them. And then the hands can be wherever feels best for you. Take a breath or two. Draw the belly in. All right, now... You're going to bring the hands to center. You're going to bring the right knee up and set it, uh, excuse me, right ankle up, set it on the left knee. So we're making some, move, some opening, creating space in the hip. Now, in this position, you can sink the hips back. You can use the elbow to create some space. You can use the hands. But anytime with the kind of alignment yoga that I teach, I like to open the chest, make the back secure, so that we're not doing what we always do, which is rounding. That's really hard on the discs. It's not very activating for the extensor muscles. The extensor muscles are really important for happiness. Fright and flight tends to be this kind of flexed, protect, protected position, using those extensor muscles and walking and turning the head helps actually cultivate happiness. All right, from here, if you like, kind of scoop underneath your leg, see if you can stand up and find some balance challenge for one, but for two, see if you can open that hip here. Again, not rounding at the shoulders, but lift the chest up so you're activating the back, taking every opportunity. Breathe. All right, you can slowly Set that foot down, sink back to your chair pose, regain your composure, let the breath slow, 
and inhale here, exhale, hands to heart, cross that left ankle to right knee. I wish I could see you, I bet you're doing really good. All right. Okay, keep sinking hips back. Couple more breaths. Know where you're going, and then when you're ready, scoop underneath of that foot, that ankle, that knee, keeping it supported. And you might find you have a strong side and a side that needs a little bit more work. One where the range of motion is not the same in the knee or the hip, that's okay. Still a little soft in that standing leg, lifting the heart, pulling the shoulder blades back. And then, so you've got safety, and then you start feeling into that hip. A couple of breaths. All right, then you're gonna slowly lower down. If you're forward on your mat, go ahead and orient yourself so that you're facing your view and Take both toes facing forward. Just hinge at the hips here. You're gonna come forward into a wide leg forward fold. Knees are gonna still stay a little bit soft, but the four corners of the feet are firmly planted. And then let the head go. So even in this position, I still am sending the sitting bones back a little bit rather than rounding a lot. You may feel better up on the fingertips. You may wanna cross the arms. You can grab the ankles. Let this be your version of a wide-legged fold. Take a few breaths. And then from here, I'd like you to walk your hands forward. So it's gonna be as if you're in a down dog. That's about the length of this coming forward and make it into a wide leg down dog where you can take the chest through the thighs, push the hands away, still relaxing the head. Good, now you're gonna walk the hands back. You're gonna just bring the feet in just a little bit so you can move to malas in a pose. Maybe you need a blanket underneath, your, underneath the feet, but basically, you're squatting, legs are wide. Use the hands to bring together, stretching through the inner thighs, lifting the heart and chest, good. All right, and then gently coming on down. And here, we're gonna also take a wide-legged fold. So just kind of trying this in a couple different positions. So in the position of sitting, you have less concern about balance, um, and you certainly um, have a more secure platform as the seat contacts the floor. So sit up on the sitting bones. And this is often enough for people. Sometimes I'll take my hands back and kind of lift, and then just decide if that feels good, stay right there. If you can take the sitting bones, uh, excuse me, take the pelvis forward, take the pelvis forward, just as much as feels comfortable. Wait three or four breaths and maybe take a little bit more. And again, I'm keeping the chest open rather than rounding and slumping, which is what we tend to do throughout the day. So part of my philosophy with yoga and chiropractic is undo what you do. Undo what we do. Breath here. Now, if you'd like to Walk your hands over to the right side. Maybe take the arm up and over. Whichever of those positions feels best to you. And then taking it over to the other side. And again, you could just reach, pressing the pelvis through. If you wanna take the arm over, that's good too. behind the knees, give them some assistance, drawing together. And then let's go ahead and sweep you around. And you're gonna lie back. And just like we did a minute ago, we're gonna do 
uh, supine pigeon pose. We just did it standing. So the right ankle is gonna go onto the left knee. Grab behind the left thigh, draw it in. So you're basically in the same pose, but this time your back is supported. So the hips aren't necessarily pulling you out of alignment as much. If you'd like to use the elbow to assist the knee and the inner thigh stretch, or you can take that leg up if you like. And then from here, you're gonna slide your right knee across the left. So you have a very deep cross in the knees. And then grab a hold of the shin, the feet, the ankle, the big toe, but just don't kind of wrench on the ligaments in the ankle. Have the ankle be steady. And you'll feel a little bit more stretch on the out, outer hips here. You're going to release this. Take your left ankle, set it down on the right knee. So starting again from the beginning on the other side for reverse pigeon, or supine pigeon, excuse me, you're going to bring that right leg in. Maybe kick it out straight. Just feel into what your body needs. Cross deeply at the knees. Grab behind the shins. Start drawing the knees towards you till you feel the edge of tension in a hip. And then send the breath there. You're going to slowly release. Set both feet down on the mat. You're going to take your arms out to the side, palms down. Lower the knees over to the right. Turn the head to the left, and then turn the palms up. Take a couple of breaths here. Maybe press that right shoulder blade into the mat. Just releasing the spine. Inhale here. Exhale, take this to the other side. Turning the head the opposite way. You're gonna come back to center. From here, take the legs out long, reach the arms overhead, straight, straight up. So it's as if you're just stretching one big long stretch. Press the heels away, reach the arms up. Breath or two here. Good. And you're gonna take your, um, bend your elbows. And you've got a couple of choices here with this stretch, but make sure your low back is safe and secure, that it feels comfortable. So like I usually will bend my, uh, bend my knees and kind of lift up a little bit, and then put my arms up overhead in goal post position. My hands don't come to the back of the floor, so I've got to move them out to the side a little bit. So wherever your hands can be on the back of the floor, if you could put them at 90 degrees, great. Then you can keep the legs like this. You can maybe go out straight, but just protect your body, protect the spine. And for a few minutes, just think a little bit about alignment. That this is one of the more neutral positions that we're in in yoga. So we're completely flat, we're supported. The palms are up. You should have some spinal alignment. You can kind of wiggle the back and kind of push the spine against the mat, and then you can lift it. But try and get a few breaths here. Even if you like, try that breath that we started with, starting in the pelvis, drawing the pelvic bowl up and in, belly button in, breathing up through the heart space, up through the throat space, through the top of the head.
Just taking this time to integrate your practice. Let the body open. I've got one more stretch for you. So from here, I want you to take your hands and just kind of imagine that you're gonna do a back bend. You're not going to do a back bend. I just want you to take the hands overhead, put the palms down. The hands are right next to the ear. So there's just a little bit of a lift stretching through the back of the shoulders. Now, if you have an advanced practice and wanna take wheel pose, that's okay with me. And then go ahead and release that. And if there's anything else that you feel like you need to do, you can take that pose on your way to transitioning into Shavasana pose. But we will move into the Shavasana pose, in which case the feet will sort of flop out. The hands will be down by the hips. Just make any adjustments in the spine and the shoulders that you need to. And let go of any special breathing that you have been practicing during this practice. Know that this is your time to integrate the practice that you've done, the alignment that you've created, the mind, the body, the spirit. For a few minutes, you'll just lie completely flat, resting. Begin to relax the hands and feet. The arms, the legs, the torso and spine. Relax your face, the facial muscles. Let go of any tension anywhere. And I'll let you stay to rest. Stay as long as you like. Thanks for joining me. Have a great rest of your day. Namaste.